I loves me some one degree mm, of Chunky B. Now, I just have to make a comment about Chunky B. Have you ever seen him looking so good? That includes actress Lady Kazan, comedian Chunky B, and Playboy TV host Julie Strain. Chunky? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> Check it out. Hey, first of all, uh, Andy Davy, thank you for being here. Hey, you're so very welcome. The Garage of Love. Um, hey, everybody, whatever the heck is going on, thank you for tuning in to One Degree of Chunky B, um, <laughs> chunkyb.tv, and you know for a fact I cannot do this without the man who runs the Garage of Love. Please say hello to Gary Adler. Thank you, Chunky, for that warm introduction. Yeah. And uh, listen, I just want to apologize to our audience. We've been a bit on hiatus. It's summertime, bro. And we did the Father's Day special round for two weeks. Which was awesome. And then we ran an, uh, uh, one of our favorites, Marty Laquadara mm -hmm. episode. And now we've got something really special. But before we get to that, the duck. Venice Duck. The duck. Man, did you hear what's going on at uh, Dodger Stadium? What's going on there? Number one seller. Come on, really? Yep. They just That's became awesome. the number one That's fantastic. beer seller in uh let's tell everybody who our sponsor is that is stuck with john henry binder and you got christian that's right go see him at james beach and the melody, melody the melody bar right by um uh, the airport that's right hey guys what about this guy give your hands together put your hands together he's no wizard of the knobs and we miss <laughs> travis spencer like nobody's business and he's out in the but desert but i'm gonna say it because i said it earlier and i don't know if you're paying attention andy davy ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Technical director Andy right. Davis. And I, by the way, on mic and camera this week. Yep. Yeah. Check, check. Hey, this isn't on again. It is, trust me. I don't think it's on. It's on. Wait, wait, oh, wait, it's wait. on. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, if you know the show, if you know One Degree of Chunky Bean, you know that Adder and I love to have comedians, writers, and, and people of wisdom and intelligence. Anyone and, with and, a great story, we want here. How long have I been working at the NFL? Uh, a few months, right? No, no, no. A few years. Oh, now. is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I personally am not a big fan of the Dallas Cowboys and hold that thought, brother love. Now, listen, but, I, I'm on the same page. Okay. I'm a Cincinnati dude. And I'm a Miami Dolphin fan. And I've got a little bit of love for the Giants. But can you please give your undivided attention and your love to one of, we'll talk about it, more of his kindness, Jeff Rower yes. right now. Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys linebacker. Linebacker, 1981 to 88. 82 to something like that. 82 to 88. <laughs> I Ladies forgot I have brain damage. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, listen to me. Uh, and listen to all of us, and we're going to listen to you. Action. More importantly, before we start jumping into your football career, I love the fact that your kid loves baseball. I love the fact that he's up there in North Venice. I love the fact that the three of us met with nothing to do with football. Yeah. Yeah, or podcasts or anything. No. no, yeah. no it was no. just like, who is the big dopey dad? Yeah. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. Who's I was at a barbecue. <laughs> At his house. Yeah. And, and somebody started talking about Jeff Rohr. And I'm like, wait, that's Jeff. That's the linebacker Jeff Rohr that I'm at, who's at his house, who's been the dad? I know that this is questions I'm about to ask you. You've been asked probably 100 times. But when, I, I know you're a Southern California dude. Oh, yeah. When did you separate yourself from the average football player? At what age? Wow, I've never been asked that, but that's very interesting. Um, you know, I played down at Maricosta. And I was an all CIF center, and um, I uh, I actually was small. I was like 190 pounds or something, but still still good. And uh, I played in the Lions All Star game, and I th Freeman McNeil was the running back. And Freeman played a bunch of years for the Jets and was a Heisman Trophy nominee, yep. I think. Yep. And um, we played the Lions game, and we dominated him. I dominated him. Uh, sorry, Freeman. She had a bad day. Um, 
And <laughs> by then, all the scholarships had been given out, and I had signed with Yale and the the, the SC and the UCLA guys. Come, like, who who are you? What 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 is this thing that we found? You know, in a beach guy, you know, long hair and the mustache and the whole seventies thing. And um, but anyway, then I went to Yale and and. Actually, I wasn't even that good there, and I kind of. <laughs> That's not true, by the way. <laughs> Sorry about that. Is Sorry not about. true. That's bullshit, <laughs> Jeffrey. Okay, Jeff. Je I, I gotta stop. Yeah. Do yeah. you see the way he just slowly skipped over Yale? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Did okay. you get a full ride? They don't give them. My dad, no, my mom, and dad had to refinance their house. To, oh my god! To put me through Yale. It's an Ivy school. Yeah. Ivy schools don't give. They uh, don't scholarships. give scholarships. No, I didn't know that. Did yeah. you know that, Andy Davy? No, idea. no, 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 nothing. But one of the weird things you're, you're mentioning that. So, so I came to Yale as a center, and then they, when all the freshmen, they had a hundred of us there. We were freshmen. They put us all in the field, and they go, "Okay, well, uh, defense, go over here, and offense, go over there." So I, I ran over to defense because I wanted to be a linebacker. And then uh, we started practicing and stuff. And later in the day, the, you know, the head coach was like, "Hey, I, I brought you in as a center. Why aren't, why aren't you a center?" And I'm like, I'm "Not a center. I never played center." <laughs> And they just kind of, they just kind of, this like there was so many people, there was confusion. It's kind of went, okay, we'll stay over there. And then I ended up being, you know, the starting linebacker for the freshman team. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Right. Yeah. Right. Do you understand what's happening? Yeah. Okay. He is one, super smart. Two, a well, center. we don't know that part yet. Yes, you, don't, <laughs> you don't go to Yale. I can't. You don't add. go to Yale. No, I get, I, you go to Yale to play football, right? No, no, no. I, but no. were you smart they too? Don't Why don't, don't you ask him if he's smart? Did you get straight A's through high school? Yes. <laughs> Um, That's obvious, brother. Oh man! No, you get you get no. In order to get into an Ivy League school, you got to get straight A's. You got to do good on the SATs, and then you got to be like, they want to know like that you uh, taught pottery and uh, helped uh, you know homeless right. people. Right, and, right, right. You so know, you junior be, policeman. Did you, you interview gotta, <laughs> to go to Yale? Yeah, I can't remember. And when you were there, were they like uh, pottery, straight A's? Eh, football, whatever. Uh, writes um, music, right. um, you know. Are you, they not are, care? Are you a music guy too? No, no. I, I I play the guitar and write music. Yeah, like. What did you bring? We should. That's next time. That's next. Time. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Were you like this most athletic nerd? You know, it was it was weird back then. It was like I mean, yes. I mean, I got straight A's. I was the lead in the uh, senior play. Um, was it a musical? Um, no, it was a comedy. It was a uh, Woody Allen play. But, uh, excuse me, I'm burping because of this beer is amazing. Venice That's Duck. Venice Duck, go. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that burp brought to yeah. you by Venice, Venice Duck. Duck. <laughs> oh, boy, it's good. Um, no, it's weird. You know, it's like, you know, you're just a kid. You're growing up. You don't know what's going on. You're just like, I was supposed to get straight A's, so I did. And, and, you know, I worked hard at football, and I loved it. And I really, really put in my time in the off season, And, you know, and I... I I really enjoyed hitting, and I didn't, you know, fit, you know, when you get to a certain level of football, you gotta, you know, pain becomes your friend, mm -hmm. so you can't be affected by a lot of that stuff, and you can't get tired, and you can't give up, and all that crap. So you know, I was just one of those guys. I was like a mercenary that I loved it, and I and I enjoyed school, and it was fun. And yeah, by the way, he was not a slouch at Yale. He had 136 <laughs> tackles one year, 71 solo tackles, leading the team. So you were no slouch, my friend. Okay. You stood out. Okay, okay. You just gave me goosebumps. Right? right? You just gave me goosebumps. And I wanted to ask him, if he go yeah. into a college like that, did that help you, you think? I'll give you the, I'll give you the story, and it's true. You, you teed me up, and you didn't know it. But my senior year, Napoleon McCallum was playing for Navy, and he was a Heisman Trophy uh, candidate. candidate. And the Dallas Cowboys sent their scouts to scout him. And... I think he got 34 yards or something like that. <laughs> Against you? At, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. They went to the Yale game. No, and they go no, like. No, no, no. They went to. Yeah, they went to the Yale game. Right. To watch Napoleon. Napoleon and, and it was like, who is this freak? Right. You know? And, um, <laughs> and then they sent the scouts back and they go like, okay, we need this guy because they were get D.D. Lewis was retiring. And there was this really weird position called right outside linebacker on the Dallas Cowboys, mm -hmm. which is a combination of like a. It's just a mini Quarter. thing, super, super deep uh, thinking game position, and you had to be pretty fast and really strong. And it's a weird position, but th th I fit, so you know that. And Landry was the coach. Coach Landry, yeah. Wow. Landry. And you had wheels. You had you 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 had speed. Four or five, yeah. Shut up. Wow. Four or five and benching four hundred, so I was Fuck. I was ready to go. And how how many years did you rock that stash, bro? 
Uh, <laughs> it, it was sharp. You look him up, by the way. Handsome man. Full, yeah. Fully, beautifully quashed stash. I had a full, like, chip stash. Um, I want to say it was, I rocked it for at least a year or two. But then I cut my hair and all that stuff. When I started starting for the cab, it took me a couple of years to learn the defense. That's how complicated it was. Um, but then I, I cleaned up and became a, an American. Let me ask you something. Did you ever think, fuck, I need to go back to center? <laughs> well, um, no. <laughs> but I can tell you a funny center story if you want to hear yeah, it. Yeah, let's do it. Of course we want to hear it. Do you remember Mike Webster? No. Mike Webster. From where? Mike Webster was the was the Pittsburgh Steelers center for 100 years. Okay, most why famous. would I know that? Does anybody know that? Oh, everybody knows Mike Webster. He's yeah, the, yeah. probably the most famous center ever in the NFL. Wait, wait, wait time out, time out. Uh, the guy that rolled his sleeves 80, up. Yeah, yes, 52, 52. 5'2". Yes, no, no, no. I'm talking about the uh, the years probably from 80, 82 to 89. 80, 80, well, Mike, Mike was there, I think, 15 years. So. And the only reason I know that because I was in Cincinnati and we were... Um, oh, you know, yeah. So yeah. we all know that. So he was part of the Steel Curtain, and I was in pajamas watching this guy play, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, cut to eight years later, and I'm there, and it was a preseason game, and our coach was moving people around, so he had me at middle linebacker. And I'm looking at Mike Webster, and I'm going, like, this is surreal. And this is, like, and Brad shows there. I'm going, like, this is... I. Like, how are you here? Why am I here? This means it makes no sense. And Mike, Web Mike Webster, when am I? And now he's, I'm going to hit him. So the refs, they're about ready to hike the ball, and the refs come in. They go, time out, time out, time out. And I go like, okay. And it's 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 August in Dallas, so it's probably 95 with the humidity of 80. And it's like, so Mike Webster puts his hands on his hips, and he looks right at me. He goes, Jesus Christ, it's hotter than shit out here. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so a little Justin like, Bieber voice. That's not the voice, Mike. <laughs> not the voice. I've been looking. I've been wanting. You were supposed to growl at me. Stop it. Do that again. Back to one. <laughs> so I like. I literally. Oh my yeah. God, it's hilarious. So I literally turned around, turned away from him, and walked like three yards back and went down to a knee, and I was like crying, laughing to him. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ! So how this, this isn't happening. It's not happening. Oh my God! Michael Jackson came out. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> yeah. And by the by the way, full respect to that guy because he he like he was probably the best center of yeah. all time. Workhorse man. And I guess if you snap the ball that many times, you have a right to have a high voice. <laughs> oh, um, that full circle. Hey, who would oh, you hit the God. hardest? Who did you? Yeah, God. yeah, and, and did you feel bad afterwards? No, no, no. It's just, I mean, it's all, you know, honestly, those games, I, I don't remember many of them or any plays. Like, some guys have this memory where they can go, yeah, I remember it was third and four, and the, the, like, I don't remember any of that crap. Like, I barely even remember playing. Really? And I don't think it's because, you know. I'm, Concussions? No, I don't think nah. it's because of that. I just think it's because, you know, some guys are, like, super intense and focused on the exact moment. And, you know, other guys are, you know, more more aware of what's happening. Probably the quarterbacks and the wide receivers and the DBs are more aware of, like, where they are and what's happening. Right. And, and then the freaks, like the linebackers and the defensive linemen and the linemen are suffered. Just, it's a fist fight. So you're kind of just in a survival mode. Right. Now, right. Dick Buck has said for the, the five seconds between the snap and the end of the play, there's nothing he could think of. Other than the task at hand, did you feel that way too? I, I, I do, and I've. And if you guys want to hear a Dick story, you teed me up again. Yeah, please go. No, I don't think anybody's heard this on a wide range, um, and Mike can say it's not true. But and he's a great guy too. I've met him a bunch of times as a wrestler. He's a true gentleman, um, and another legend in the league. But but my coach, Jerry Tubbs, who was a linebacker mm -hmm. on the team and the and a player coach when Mike was playing for the Cowboys, said that the guys used to gamble on the plane. And they'd always team up on Mike and try to get his per diem. And Dick used to get really upset. So he said one one time, Jerry, and Jerry had a real Texas draw. He goes, JF, he goes, one time they took Mike's per diem, and he was so mad. He goes, I've never seen a man do this, but he took a deck of cards and put it above his head and ripped it in half and threw it all in the air. And everybody ran. <laughs> <laughs> you ripped the deck of cards. Yeah, I mean, the, back then they were paper, but I don't think it's not yeah, really still, possible. Man. It's not possible. I mean, it's not. I mean, you have to have like a vice. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But Mike, Mike, Mike was um, 
from what my coach told me, was an um, unbelievably powerful player, and his hands were like, you know, there's it's you get freaks in the NFL. There's there's tons of them. You know, they're one-off triple chromosome dudes. Yeah. Wow. And um, yeah. and Mike had the hands of like an animal. Like if he got you, you're done. <laughs> so it's like, wow. yeah. Okay, J- Jeff. Let me ask you something. Okay, you you had the intelligence. You you were raised uh, by parents that absolutely adored you, and then they had to do the you know mortgage of the house to, to get you to Yale. Thanks, mom and dad. What? How did it feel to know that you're not on a practice squad? You're running with a Dallas Cowboys uniform, and you're playing as a linebacker. And, and you, you, to feel the energy, what was that like? It, it, it was a freaky day because it was like, I think I was two years in, let's say two years in, going into my third year. And um, I got up in the morning and I opened the paper, and it said one, some they had cut one of the linebackers. So I came to practice, and I go, Coach, I go, you, kid, you guys cut the – the, line, the starting linebacker goes, yeah you're the starting linebacker nice and i was like i was like i don't think i'm ready for this <laughs> was it freshman year no no, no it was no, it was like my third year third it took year. a long time to learn that defense and it freaked me out i think it was my third it could have been my fourth i have no idea so you were not expecting i, to start I was not ever expecting it and then i played the first game and i ended up getting like you know i had like the most tackles i had, I had a really good game so it kind of took the pressure off i some i kind of still had no idea what i was doing but once you're forced into the situation because basically the defense you ch- the, the 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 old cowboy defense was they call special every week and that meant every formation that the other team was in we had a defense for it so they would line up in one formation they would change we would change they put somebody in, in motion we would change, change and then motion would change it again so like three or four times before the ball snap our defense is changing coverage and everything and 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 the run defense so it was like for a first year guy, it just was not happening. It's like it was, an offense. It was all about audibles. It was yeah. It was it was, it was all audibles. audibles the whole game. The whole game. Hey, check this out. You were hitting. You were starring. You were a, a, a badass um, linebacker. But what I want to ask you, and don't answer it now, but how many uh, cheerleaders did you bang? That's Dallas Cowboys uh, cheerleaders. Dallas Dallas Cowboys. Not just cheerleaders. Dallas Cowboys. I mean, and cheerleaders. at the height of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleader craze. That was when he was at the Say, top. Of- hold that, right? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, once again, you're listening to One Degree and watching One Degree of Chunky B. We got Jeff Rower, one of the most badass fucking linebackers. I haven't even talked to you about Baldy yet. Which we will. Yeah, um, we got other things too, you know, like yeah. our, both of our sons are playing football this year and we yeah. want to talk to him yeah. about that too. Jeff Rohr from the Dallas Cowboys. Don't go anywhere. As a matter of fact, get on the phone and call, get online and tell everybody we've got one badass motherfucker in the garage of love. Bam. See you in a second. Hey, you guys, Chunky B. One degree of Chunky B in the garage of love and you know if you want to get your quack on, you go to Venice Duck. And I'm not even kidding. This is a good beer. Tell your friends, don't be afraid to get your quack on. Dude, that's actually, this is good. actually a really good know, beer. It's fucking great beer. <laughs> You're so lucky. Oh, oh, shit, I'm still recording. Hey, you guys, music provided by Play Up Music. That's playupmusic.com. <laughs> Hi, this is Jeff Rohr. You are watching and listening to One Degree of Chunky B. Ladies and gentlemen, you're back to One Degree of Chunky B in the Garage of Love. Of course, we've got uh, the Tenant Director of Love, Andy Davey. Andy Davey, everybody. And then um, the guy that, oh my God, keeps everything moving smoothly. Yeah. You would be dead without me. <laughs> That's basically what you're saying. Basically true. Yeah. Okay, Gary Adler, the Thank executive you, producer of Love. And here's another thing, people. I don't know if you know, you can go to uh, <laughs> chunkybee.tv and some of you people are donating... Um, to keep this going, you donate it on Amazon, and even if you want to go shopping, you can shop and go through my Amazon, our Amazon. That's button, right. And then you can get a discount, and we get a little something. It's actually not a discount. Nothing changes, but we get a little money. Dude, that's so nice. Dude. We, yeah, that's nice, yeah. right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Andy, get the, to it. And, and then the donate, the no, the donate button. And I want to let you say, Andy just got a new um, refrigerator, <laughs> and he needs a little food. money. <laughs> He needs food. You, you, you could say that. Yeah. And by the way, who do we love to drink with? Venice Duck. Thank you. Thank you, Christian Warren. Thank you, John Henry Binder. And by the way, John Henry Binder, huge cowboy fan. He's like the freak. biggest cowboy He's fan gonna ever. Freak. Yeah. He's going to freak. Um, welcome back. Say hello can to you, Jeff. Can what? you talk for a few minutes? Because I'm going to get a beer. Go get a beer. Do you need one, Andy? I need one. Okay. okay. A dentist, a dentist <laughs> duck. Okay. Um, Where did we Jeff, do this? Je, 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 Jeff Rowan. There's something about cheerleaders. Or no, 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 no. Oh, that's right. It's right. Was there any? Can, are, are we are we back to him? We are. Okay. You want me to just pull you out of the fire? Pull you me out of the fire. Okay. Pull me out of the fire. I need to stop, drop, and roll. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. All right. So anyway, the the you know the cheerleaders were forbidden to be seen with us or anything, or they'd be fired. So it was a big deal. Um, we did, although you know, although th- they had, to, we all had to be a little careful. We did remain friends. Okay. You know, we did remain friends, and then um, every now and then, somehow, I, I arranged a couple of these events, and I don't, I don't know how it happened, but we we used to um, all end up at the sands, at this pool suite in the off season, and just happen to all be at the same place at the same time. And hang out for a week, so that we 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 were, we were all good buddies, and you know we we kept everything on the on the DL. But we we uh, back in the days when the Sands had the pool suites, we had yeah. we had some sweet parties. So you got a Hummer or two, basically. No, don't, don't what that. I'm yeah. allowed to say that? No, you're, you're allowed to say, it, but you don't answer that. Why not? Yeah. This our audience wants to know. Did you get a Hummer Seriously, or two? How many Hummers? No, we're <laughs> no, my my part of this thing is the straight guy. Ah, okay. Um, damn. I will let you know that working over at the NFL, okay, you, you and I have a, uh, a... John, get close to the mic, bud. We've got a uh, friend. Yes. In common, Baldy. Now, I want to let you know, I am not personal friends with him. He knows me as a camera guy. And, you know, yeah. Just, okay, uh, and I'm even, I'm even like spacing out his full name because he just Brian, goes Brian Baldinger. Baldinger. Okay, thank you. An amazing, amazing dude. Talk Amazing to me dude. about him. Very, very talented as well. Super, super good guy. Hey, Baldy. Yep. Um, gosh, he was. Uh, we played together for years. Um, Wait, he was on your squad at the Cowboys. Yeah, wow. yeah. He was a guard, so we used to see each other quite a bit in practice. And Brian was a super hard worker. A lot of time in the weight room. And I, I remember um, Brian. I, I don't think you're going to get mad about mad at me about this, but if you do, I'm sorry. I don't think it's a big deal. But we were having a party at my house one time, and him and um, another player, Don Smerick, got mad at each other. And Cowboys being gentlemen, they decided not to um, get in a full fight, and I was kind of officiating this. <laughs> so instead, uh, I don't know who started. I wanna, I'm going to blame it on Smerick. So Smerick walked over to Brian Baldinger's truck, and it was kind of a whole group that went at once. And Smerick took his rear view mirror and ripped it off. And then Brian walked over to Smerick's truck and took his uh, right or left front fender and ripped it up. <laughs> and then Smerick went over and ripped off a windshield. And then I think <laughs> Brian punched the other windshield. And then it ended with, I think, Baldy or Smerick ripping a small tree out of the ground and sticking it through the other guy's windshield. And then it was like, guys, do you know how expensive this is getting? And they all kind of looked at each other and went, okay. <laughs> Thanks. We'll ah, shake hands. I'm but it was sorry. Like, they were the car. Oh they did absolutely God. destroyed each other's cars with their hands. Yeah. They That's amazing. Wow. Remember when yeah. you did that to your Prius, Andy? Uh, j- just this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but Bri- Brian, uh, Brian's done an amazing job um, with his career, and he's a, he's a super solid dude. And but let me ask you something. Yeah. What? What was your uh, pinnacle? Where like, oh my God, I am smack flat in the middle of the NFL. I, you, didn't, you, you don't have a ring. No, 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 we didn't. But we, we, we were in a lot of playoff games, you know. We, the Giants were hot, you know, with Bavaro and, and Sims and all that when they won the Super Bowl, and they beat us, and they, they won the Super Bowl, and the, they beat us in the playoffs. The Bears got hot with that whole team, mm-hmm. and they beat us. And we were right there, and sometimes we'd even split with them in the, in the middle of the season. I think for me, the time that I, I'm getting goosebumps now that like just totally freaked out, we were playing RFK. I want to say it was 
I, I don't know, but it was third and one or fourth and one or something with like Riggins or one of those guys. It was RFK, so it was probably Riggins. And um, somebody called a timeout. It was like, you know, whoever makes this four inches is going to win the game. And it was so loud, I took my helmet off and screamed as loud as I could, and I couldn't hear my voice. And I went wow. like, this is the real shit. Wow. This is amazing. And you guys can tell. I just, got goose, I just got goosebumps, brother. <laughs> yeah. I took That's my crazy, helmet dude. off and, and I, like as loud as I could, and I could not hear myself. And I was who, like, who won that four inch Holy battle? shit. I don't even remember. <laughs> it wasn't important after that. <laughs> Nothing mattered after See, that. That's minute. interesting. You have a totally different perspective. And that, on your that career. field, by the way, this is another great little thing that people need to know about those cheaters up there is that field was sand. And uh, there, if there was a blade of grass every four feet, um, really? I'll give somebody a thousand dollars. But it was You're it was kidding. sand. The whole field was sand. That's what they loved. Sand. We had to have illegal three quarter inch cleats, but the rest couldn't do anything because it was like it was like playing at the beach. The re the Redskins wanted it because they had the hogs and riggins, and they would play. You know that's why we love playing them in, in, on our stadium on the AstroTurf because then it was like, you know, we got the Tony Dorsett show for you. Yeah. But play it, But then they had the gall to actually paint it like they cross cut it <laughs> so it was like two colors of painted sand when we showed up and i was like these guys this is unbelievable look at the they got painted they're painting the sand to make us to make it look like they have grass but oh you can't God. you know back then That's the tv was so bad what about the uh, the visitors locker room that were they that yeah did did you ever get, you, was it respectful yeah like what, what goes on there i don't know man <clears throat> you know back then a lot of them were you know baseball fields and stuff yeah so we didn't really pay attention you didn't care. You just didn't care. Didn't even notice. What was your pregame ritual? You know, our doctors were all smoking in the locker room and shit. You know, shut like, up. No, they were. It was, it was the old days, man. It yeah. was, there was cigarette smoke and everything else, and blood. And what was your pre? <laughs> did you have a pregame ritual? You know, I was. Uh, I would get there very early. Um, I wouldn't get taped up very early, but you did just get there early because it's like uh, I consider myself a pretty normal dude, but to get yourself in the state of mind to play one of those games, it's like. It's like you guys sitting here, like you'd be fine until I slapped you in the face four times, and then you'd go like, "Hey, I'm getting slapped in the face. I better, I better react, or I'm going to get slapped again." So you have to get yourself in the mood to go like, "Okay, this shit's for real, and th those guys don't like me. They're not going to be nice to me. They're going to try to hurt me." So you have to get, like, you can't. There, and there's no room to, you know, you mess around one time in the game, and it's the touchdown thing. So you can't. You, you got to be serious from the f first from play. The Wow. So it was. It took a long time. I was very, very serious. Before Did they shoot you up? Um, there was there was times when when I I, I had some xylocaine. Um, the easy the easy out is um, I busted a rib and it didn't matter. So I mean, didn't matter to who. So wait, mid game? No, it didn't matter. Like you can play with a busted rib. Right. You know, it's not going to kill you. It's right. going to hurt a lot. So you know, they would shoot that up, and that was about three or four weeks of getting shot up because it hurt really. I don't know if anybody's ever busted a rib. If you, you, and I had to play because the guy behind me, was, it was, just wasn't, you know, it, it, it was a big difference. And, you know, it was halfway through the season. So that they did that. And then one time I screwed up my ankle pretty bad. And, and like I, there was, a, I can tell this story. It's so, so long ago. But there was, a, they put like it's so much tape around there. They had to cut a hole in an exacto blade. And the doctor was an old guy who's a, is a sweetheart, and they were, they were great doctors, but he was, uh, he's an old guy from Texas who used to smoke, and he was like, I'll never forget one day, he was talking to his friend about, um, he was talking to his friend about um, bulls. He had bulls. He was a bull farmer, like a cow guy, and the bull right. sperm, and the bulls, and I got the best bulls, and and I'll never forget it. And at the same time, he's injecting me with smoking over my wound. <laughs> it was like, it was like, what the fuck? It was like is during halftime or something? Like it was, that's another moment where I realized I was in the NFL. Like he was had no, he wasn't even looking at me and he's like sticking me and his smoke is like, I'm going, is the ash going to fall in the hole? The ash might fall in the hole. Doctor, take it easy. You know, can you save the bull story for two minutes? You know, just get me injected and get me out of here and you can talk bulls all day long. It was like, you give me a break. About the game. I was just like, this is this is surreal. And then I went out and, and hobbled my way through the game. Did wow. you ever... Um, That's a true story. Did you ever that come across great. another football player and just feel absolutely small? Yeah, you know, and it's weird, but, you know, 
one one of the guys on our team, Phil Paws, Derek Phil, was six nine and thirty something. And uh, Mark to to an a God bless his soul. Mark passed quite a while ago. One of the greatest greatest human beings I had ever met on the planet. And that's nice of you to say. Crushed us when we lost Mark. Um, um, but uh, those guys being around those guys, I remember Mark at a party one time grabbed a two hundred and fifty pound guy by the collar <laughs> with one hand and. Picked him up two feet and held him on the wall. And I <laughs> went, Mark, we gotta, can we just let him down, please? <laughs> yeah. And wow. then Phil, when Phil would go through a door, he couldn't go through straight or sideways. So he would have to bend down and go sideways. And then when you see a guy come out of a door. Popping up. Up and out. And Phil's in above the door. You're going, and I used to love hanging out with those guys. Because I was, you know, I was 6'3 and 230. But I felt like, a, you know, just like a chevelt little like me rabbit yeah I was yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was so fun being around that we go out drinking and i got these giant guys around me and i'm, I'm wow. a big guy but i felt so small i was just like yeah my buddies they take care of me that's great change yeah. the subject go you got a you got a, a a punk in my house yeah, right yeah. now yeah what um johnny Eddie, d yeah Eddie's, great baseball player he's on my son's baseball can I finish team my, can i finish my yeah sentence? sorry man i thought you were gonna get into something else no, I'm talking about his son. I wanted to give him his due. Yeah. Everybody knows his son. When you go to North Venice, they know your son. Yeah. What do you want? What do you want from him? You know something? Sports? Yeah. Um, first of all, he's in math camp right now. So I want him to be a great student. <clears throat> uh, we're in, you went to Yale. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to math camp in the summer. Um, That's but, fun, but it, right? you know, he's an all-star catcher, and he's doing real good bat 500 on the all-stars. And, and um, But, you know, I... I He's never asked me to play football. If he wants to play football, I'll let him. Um, I love the sport. I, I I played with probably some of the worst equipment. You know, it's certainly a lot better. We had a canvas. We had a plastic in high school. I had a plastic shell with a canvas, like a canopy thing inside of it that would fit on your head. You know, and at Yale, I forget what we had, but it wasn't much better. And then the Cowboys. <laughs> I still have, when, when you break a helmet, you get to keep it. So I got one at my house. And the <laughs> thing weighs like 70 pounds. I laugh because I think it's pathetic in, oh. in, in, in a good way. No, in a good way. And, and, and not only that, the AstroTurf back then was unbelievably bad. It was mm. like we're sitting in, in this garage with a carpet. It was basically like this, the AstroDome. That's, uh, when they, that's when they started bringing it in, right? Yeah, it was era, unbelievable yeah. That, how bad it was. So, I mean... You know, if the kids want to play now, it's a lot safer. They don't even let them hit during practice. We hit every day, and had we had coaches that, um, if, if Mike and Herb Younger are listening to this, they'll, they'll love this. But they they would do drills where we had a dirt hill, and they would put us at the bottom of the hill on our back, and then we'd flip over, and they'd run the kid down the hill and run run us in, not not just the normal crushing right. drill up the hill down the like downhill a human on a hill <laughs> with a downhill run, you know. <laughs> It was like, <laughs> so football's a lot safer now than it's ever been. So. Are you worried about your son at all, Chunky? Well, I was just about to say something. Yeah. You, you and I have um, two kids getting into, my kid's going to go to Pally High, and he, he's, he's now doing uh neither, neither kid has played other than ever. flag football. No, but, yeah. but my kid has been in seven years of pads with lacrosse. Yeah, yeah. And all he said to me was, Dad, I want to hit. So now I'm allowing him, we are allowing yeah. him, my wife and I, to play um, at Palisades High. Yeah. Um, what's your words of advice or wisdom? You know, I think you got to just close your eyes. Um, <laughs> That's you know, I, I can't. I don't know. Idea. You know, it's so weird because you know when I stopped playing for the Cowboys, one of my a lot. I, I was really I was friends with a lot of the sportscasters and I really and the writers because I just love those guys. They were amazing, and we were always kind of on the road together. And I had a lot of respect for those guys and dug them and. We hang out and sometimes had some beers and stuff. There were a lot of really great guys, and they're very interesting, you know, intellectual people. So I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think it was five years after I left the Cowboys. One of the sports guys says, "Hey, we're playing the Rams at uh, Anaheim Stadium in a preseason game." He says, "Come out, I'll get you a sideline pass." I go, "Ah, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want to get anybody mad, you know, me hanging." He goes, "I'll put you on the Rams side." So I, I went to the game and I watched it on the field level and it blew my mind why in what way just seeing how fast and how how brutal this game was you know because when you're playing it, better you're and having, faster than when you were no you don't realize it when you're playing it there's just like oh. it's just happening right and you're part of it and then all of a sudden you're watching you're going this shit is insane yeah 
so it was just like so amazing to me like what these guys were doing but you know it wasn't that long i mean i could have I couldn't have went out there. I could have maybe went out there and played two plays before I ripped every my hamstring that I had in yeah, my body. Your groin, but, your you know, pop, 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 pop. I will say this, though. I remember I played a couple years of football when I was a kid, tackle football. And all you remember during the play, and I was a pretty good player, is what's right here. Yeah. Right? Like what's inside your head. You hear your breath. Yeah. Right? You hear your own fucking thoughts. And you don't really see the giant picture like when no. you're sitting in the stands, right? No, you smell the earth and you feel, no. the, you know, all of a sudden you, you feel something and you're always kind of shaking, you know, because it's like being in a fist fight and you no. look down and you're wow. bleeding and you're, you know, just like, you know, can I make it? Can I not make it? Am I tired? How, how hard can I go? You know, all those things go through your head because it's a gnarly game. It's like, you know, there's, I, I, I think boxers are amazing. I think the UFC guys are amazing. I mean, soccer, I love soccer. I think it's a beautiful sport. Yeah. But it's nothing like being in, in at three hours of football because, you know, they say, oh, it's so, you know, those guys have to be in the best shape and blah, blah, blah. I say, okay, well, look, do, do, do your thing, man, and then get in like a fist fight every time you kick the ball and then go back to doing your thing. You know, it's just a different, people don't get it. It's a gnarly, gnarly you sport. You respect hockey? I love hockey. That's another one. I would never have. I never have the courage to play hockey. Yeah. I put. I, I had. I had uh, my college roommates at Yale were hockey players. So I spent a lot of time and drank a lot of beers on the hockey team, mm-hmm. and went to a lot of games. Um, but that game scares the hell out of me because it's just too fast and there's ice. It's brutal. And there's <laughs> blades. And there's right. there's and, blades and a puck. Yeah. And it's yeah. backwards and yeah. everything uh, else. Man. I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say something right now. Go for it, man. My biggest regret in life is giving up football. Really? I gave it up when I yeah, was... Yeah, but you were an excellent towel boy. So, Andy. <laughs> You're um, such a dick. <laughs> I was about to get emotional, you prick. You, <laughs> you fucking goddamn executive producer. Oh. Uh, my hey, biggest... you know that when he... Uh, you know, who cares about you? When he, um, <laughs> when he <laughs> left... I've taken, I've taken left what? Jimmy Johnson came in to be the head coach of the Cowboys. Yes, we all know that. And released him. How do you feel about Jimmy Johnson? Well, you know, Jimmy and Jerry, um, Jerry bought the team, so he could do what he wanted. And, you know, he got, got rid of Coach Landry. I had a big mouth back then, so I, I said a few things that I, I actually kind of regret. And, you know, they got rid of me, and, you know, they kind of – they they did me a favor. You know, they released a fish back out into the world. You know, I needed to go out and be a man and grow up and make a living. You know, football's at some point, it's got to end. They ended it quicker. You know, I was coming off of back surgery, so it wasn't a big deal anyway for me. But they did me a favor, and I got to see that you know that, that Jerry Jones and and those guys they, they ended up being bigger men than me because you know they've done a heck of a job with the team. I got a lot of respect for them, and they've been great for the community, and and you know they, they've done a lot for Dallas. So you know I, I I give a lot of credit to Jerry, and Jimmy was doing his job. So you know I, I both of those guys ended up you know being part of NFL history, winning Super Bowls and stuff. And, you know, you got to give them credit where credit's due. Jeff Rohr, you want a round third head for home on this? Well, yeah, but <laughs> I, I, what I'd like to do, if you don't mind, is, um, you know, Jeff is more than just an ex-football player. Okay, he's in, ho- he's in California, he's in Southern California, in mm-hmm. Los Angeles, yep. with us. We work in the entertainment business. Yep. I looked up Jeff today. You are an executive producer or I don't know if you're an owner or part owner of uh, Mrs. Bond, and that's an amazing ad agency. Am, am, am I right? Can you talk well, about that for me? Yeah, sure. We're, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the partners at Mrs. Bond. We're, uh, we make TV commercials. Uh, and amazing ones, by the way. Um, and uh, and uh, 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 David Parker, by the way, is the man. Oh, Dave Parker's an amazing visual effects uh, director. And then um, this year, well, kind of a kooky football-related story. <laughs> Um, one of one of the directors that works with me, um, Scott Sabilski, great guy, amazing director, hilarious. Yeah, he uh, he directs Tosh, mm-hmm. which which is an amazingly fabulous show, and I've been over there to see him film it a couple of times. And Tosh is one of the most talented people I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And um, Scott wanted to to try to do a spec commercial, so we go, let's try a Doritos commercial. And it's like okay, so he gives me the script. I look at it, I go, this is amazing, and. Um, we shot it, and he won, and he won a million dollars in the Super Bowl. He won the Doritos thing. <laughs> it was a great commercial. Yeah, man. so we, Dude, we. I think I know. It was the one on the airplane. Yeah, it was the airplane. It's middle okay. seat. So. <laughs> okay, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk yeah. off, off air. Okay, but, but by yeah. the way, if folks at home want to see anything from Mrs. Bond, where would they go? I'm um, just to the website mrsbond.us, and uh, we make TV it's dot commercials. TV or dot, but, no dot, dot US. US. Dot US. Yeah. Excellent. I, I, I think. 
I think it's .tv. But I played NFL this, for a while, find, so They'll find know. you. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Put, Bond, though. Where, where did that come yeah. from? Um, it was better than a lot of other names that we looked at. <laughs> it was better than James. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's like, hey, hey, Jeff Rohr? Yeah. I'm going to look you in the eye. Yeah. Will you cast me in a commercial? Oh, my God. That's just uh, disgusting. I, the, the directors don't let me pick talent, but I'll certainly include you into the you casting. Know, you know, so get, check this out. I want... An audition. We want to do like a spec commercial about this guy that does a radio show. <laughs> what about and a, he has all this equipment? What if he warmed up one of your commercials? Just kept people. Oh, you just shut up, you prick! You. Is yeah. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. Look at me, executive producer of Love. Yes, my love. I want to let you know, Jeff Rower just threw down one of the best uh, uh, interviews we've had. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you. You are something it, of it, a quality individual. Thank you. It's you know I'm just thankful for living such an amazing life and so many people being part of it. And now you guys are part of it. So and a great you. artist, by the way. I went to his house. He's oh. got art all over the place. I paint cowboys. Yeah, and they're very good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Cowboys like in uniforms yeah. or yeah. cowboys on horses? Yeah, the last one I did was John Wayne. He makes a it's damn good. good chicken wing. I'll uh, tell you that. Yeah. Can I be invited? Yes. Can you just invite me and Andy? Let's do it's it. It's not all about Adam because he's the executive producer of Love. I need to be invited My somewhere. son was on his son's baseball team. I it's the that. only you reason can, why I know Jeff. You, I know can, you can come, but only if you ride your bike. I'm a bike. I got, dude, I got like six Or bikes. Uber home because we don't play. We, we play hard over there. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I do. Yeah, you do. I think I do. I think I do. Before I say goodbye to you, I would like to say thank you. Andy Davey for once again bringing your A game. Hang on, Chucky. Andy. Yeah. I know you want to wrap this up, but I told you I had a little something for you. What? I'm saying goodbye. I have a last question from Travis Spencer, the Wizard of the Knobs. Oh, I shit. I told him to look up Jeff. Yeah. He's our old technical director. Yes. He ended every show with a question. Yes. He has two options. I'm going to give you both, and then you can answer whichever one you want. Oh my God. Pick this one. Is great. The first one is. Is CTE and mental health after football a comic top a common topic amongst retired players? That's question number one. Question number two is how is it possible that the NFLPA so bad at collective bargaining that of all the major sports, NFL players have the lowest minimum salary and on top of that, non guaranteed contracts? Well, I'll answer both. The um, the NFLPA has never been amazing, and it never will be. And uh, there's there's something wrong with the voting. And by the time they, they should let the veterans vote for who runs the NFLPA, it, the, the guys would be a lot better off because the players are just not sophisticated enough, and they got too much skin in the game. Where the older guys would would lay some wisdom on them, it's kind of like the Senate or something. But the CTE thing, yeah, we all talk about it. Um, you know, it's a serious subject. There's, you know, like we were talking about Mike Mike Webster earlier. You know, he was the when they they found him dead on the street and they brought him into the morgue, and uh, a doctor named Olomowatu o- o- uh, o- something from Nigeria was the coroner. He had never ever seen a football game, knew nothing about it, and it was like a weekend night or something. So he went into his brain and he went, oh, my God, look at this. There's something wrong. And they went, do you know who that is? That's Mike Webster, you know, from the NFL. He goes, I don't even know anything about the NFL. So that's what started the whole thing was just a blind occurrence, you know, that, that got everybody talking about it. And, you know, and from then, you know, I think Dewerson shot himself in the chest. Mm-hmm. Um, because he. Sale. Yeah, he was losing it. Junior was losing it, and they've you know they've done autopsies on the guys, and they've had problems. I mean, there's it's not, you can't deny it. I mean, there's the guys have proteins in their brain that are not normal, and they're you know they're having trouble getting by. And um, you know, there's been some other guys recently. Some of my teammates, I don't want to talk about them because it's none of my business. But they're you know they've they've announced that they've 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 been having some trouble, and you know the league really should um, show some compassion if they can. And I think there's, you know, I don't think it takes a lawsuit. I don't think it takes anything. It probably just takes some people sitting at a table and figuring out a way to, you know, put some money in a pot and take care of the guys that are, the guys that aren't doing well because, you know, ultimately affects their families and affects their wives and affects their sisters and their daughters and their sons and everybody. It's not about the guy. It's not about the, you know, the guy's going to be fine. He's a big dopey idiot that wanted to play in the NFL anyway. You know, it's like me. And and you ask him, you say, would you change one thing? A guy's starting to have problems with his brain and can't remember where his car keys are. And, you know, you show, show some guys a football, they don't even know what it looks like. 
would you change a thing? They say no. Oh, it's no. like a World War II vet. You know, you were on the Yorktown. You got your leg shot off. Would you change? Hell no, I wouldn't have changed a thing. It's the same kind of thing. So I just think, I think there's room for um, some compassion and some understanding. And it's nobody's fault. And I don't think anybody wants to point the finger at the NFL. or. At the, what I mean, about insurance beyond five years after retirement? I don't see it. I don't see anybody covering it. I think it's something the league's going to have to just say, hey, look, this is part of our game. It's like, you know, it's like being, a, you know, if you're part of boxing, you're a part of the pugilist game. It's just, it's part of the game. It's hard to insure everybody in the NFL because there's so many injuries and who knows what happened yeah. in high school and who knows what happened, you know, so, but there's got to be some kind of way to, to at least not leave guys in the gutter like Mike Webster. You know, there's got to be a way. And I hope that someday down the road, the um, the NFL and the players and, you know, the, the fans too, the fans are, you know, they care about this and shit. Then, you know, then up, you know, make the tickets a dollar more a year or something. Put all that money in a fund for the guys that can't find their car keys, you know? That's it. That's the way... You end a fucking podcast. Hey yo. <laughs> Jeff Rower, Thanks. I cannot tell you how fun, educational, stimulating, and you're full of wisdom. Yeah. You are thank welcome you. in this garage of love on one degree of Chunky B at Chunky And you're welcome at the barbecue. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted. Andy Davy, give yourself some round of applause. Give yourself some boy, <laughs> Andy. <laughs> Gary Adler. I love the fact that you were so Go mad Gary. at me. Dude, you, I was so he mad He was at so mad at me. Because you, well, hey, was, and how about North North Venice Little League? Let's North give a shout Venice, out for yeah, North, North Venice, Venice Little League. League, baby. We love that league, he's, man. Yeah, he's, yeah. Got a, he's got a kid in there, too. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Oh, North Venice. Best Little League I've ever been in. Yeah. Absolutely. I just want to let you know, my son, went. he's 28 now, right now. We'll, we'll talk more about it. And by the way, uh, look That's out. That's your kid. I'm just going to say this real quick. Look out West Side Vikings. Because uh, West, uh, Beck Adler is, is, now. Is, is coming for you. Hey, Beck. I love it. I love it. Hey, yeah, and I'd like to just, if I could, just say hi to my family. And, yeah, um, please. And Don Dillon, Isabella, Heather, my mom and dad, uh, Bev and Don, and Tick and Delilah, and Matt and Beth, and Casey and Luke, and uh, everybody else in the family. Awesome. Jeff Rohrer. And Rohrer. Anna. You are a man amongst men. I yes. love the fact that you brought your A game today. Ladies and gentlemen, one Woo! degree of Chunky B. Thank you, Adder. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, fucking Jeff. Venice That's Doc. how we roll. Yeah.